Hello, everyone, and welcome to Fearlessly Authentic. I'm your host, Jody Harrison Bauer, and it is my four year anniversary. I know I celebrated this back in February when I had just signed on with Voice America, but actually, May 21st, 2020 was so it's been four years. That was my first broadcast, and I just can't even believe that it's been so long and it's gone by so friggin' fast. If you are new to the show, welcome, welcome. I love new listeners. This is the show where we educate you, empower you with that information, entertain you a bit, and inspire you to live your most fearlessly authentic life. Because in my opinion, if we're not doing that on an everyday basis, what the heck are we doing here? And I name this show Fearlessly Authentic because I was always afraid to take risks. And as I got older and decided to take more control of my life, I decided to step into my truth. And that is actually when I was able to become the most authentic person I am right now. And being fearlessly authentic is not always easy. It's hard. And I believe that anything worth going after or working on is going to be hard work, but look at the return you're going to get. When you have a child, it's not always easy to carry that child for nine months, give birth, and then have them around for the rest of your life. It is not an easy job and it's pretty thankless. Um, but no, it's not. There's so many rewards to being a mom. I just got off the phone with my 31 year old who asked me what color nail polish she should put on her toes. So it's um, it gets better and better with age, but anything, think about anything that you have really put a lot of effort into that was really meaningful to you. If you put in the effort into that relationship or that goal and you worked really hard to get the results from it that you wanted, then it was all worth it. But it does take hard work. And part of that hard work comes with overcoming fears and overcoming all types of different feelings that may sabotage what our goals are. And I can speak um, for myself as that is the only person I can speak for is myself, is that I have allowed at times for fear to get in my way of, of stopping me from doing things that I was just afraid to do. With this show, because I had so many wonderful people helping me, including Aaron, who's listening to it right now, and Robert, wherever you are, and now Tacey, and everybody else at Voice America. I would not have gotten here without your encouragement and without your patient hand-holding and helping me all along the way to have more confidence in myself, to speak my truth, and step into being the most fearlessly authentic person I could be. So I am so grateful that you took a chance on me. I am so grateful to be here on Voice America and learn how to express myself and hopefully help you, the listeners, to live your most fearlessly authentic life. So thank you for listening. Thank you for sharing. You can find me at Jody Harrison Bauer on all social media platforms. I'm on YouTube as well. And you could always email me at jody at jodyharrisonbauer.com or go to my website to work with me at jodyharrisonbauer.com. It's very easy, just Jody Harrison Bauer, and you will find me anywhere. And I also wanted to mention before we get into the episode about discipline and accountability and fear, uh, because I wrote a lot about this and I'm excited to share it with you is that I really appreciate the feedback that I get from you. And my dad is right here. He's giving me the thumbs up on this Zoom recording. It's very funny how he shows up. And, you know, all of you have helped me 
find my voice even more. And four years ago, I definitely had a voice, but now I feel braver and stronger about sharing it with you from either learning from you or things that I've learned along the way, because I feel that if we're not learning every single day, then we're not growing. And again, what are we doing here if we're not learning and growing and learning how to be happier with ourselves, learning how to have more self-compassion? And that brings, oh, this is what I wanted to mention. I wrote it down and then I put it someplace else that one of the things that I did this year, two things that I've done this year that I was fearful of, but I felt strongly enough about it to put my fear aside is that I started writing a book. I did start writing a book last June and then we squashed it. It just wasn't sounding like me. It wasn't me. So we started working um, on another book and hopefully that will be out by October or November because unfortunately I'm a little bit of, of a perfectionist and I know I need at some point to just let go. But that was really scary for me, you guys, writing a book. I've never written a book before, but I knew I had a lot to say. And so at the same time, I was also working on launching my first digital program because all of the programs that I've ever, ever had have been brick and mortar in my fitness studio. And I really didn't think after I closed the studio that I would ever want to coach or train again, but I really missed it. I really missed the interaction. I really missed helping other people. And so I launched the Hot and Healthy Accelerator program that is going on right now. I'm going to be launching it again, a longer version of it, a more comprehensive version of it in the fall. And I want to thank the ladies who are in this program who are being vulnerable because of part of being vulnerable is also a, a part of being very strong. And being vulnerable is really hard. That also has to do with our growth. And if you have a growth mindset, and if you don't allow fear to stop you or sabotage you, you can accomplish the things that you want to accomplish with hard work and discipline, because we don't get anywhere without hard work. Effort equals success. Somebody told me that a long, long time ago, like back in the 90s. And I thought about that as I was working out at the gym or I was running um, an event for this group that I belong to. And I thought everything that takes effort leads us to a better thing, as I mentioned at the beginning of the show. So again, happy anniversary to Fearlessly Authentic. Um, we just keep getting stronger and more fearless and more authentic. And I'm grateful to all of you. Please share. Remember to rate, review, and subscribe. If you don't subscribe, then we can't grow anymore. So please remember to subscribe and share with your friends. Okay, let's get into the show. So I did those two things, even though I was afraid. And you've heard that saying, do it scared. Okay, well, I've been doing a lot of things scared most of my life because if you've been listening to the show for a long time, you know that I am a self-proclaimed, but... I am a self-proclaimed recovering scaredy cat because I finally started to believe in myself. And once I overcame that fear of not being perfect, not, not fearing being judged and not fearing failure, but regarded it as a learning process instead my mindset grew from scarcity to growth. And in honor of this four-year anniversary, I went back to listen to the first two episodes of my show. And ironically enough, I talked about discipline and goals. So that is what I wanted to discuss again 
because not much has changed. And if you are somebody listening right now who is at the precipice of making a big change in your life, whether it is in fitness or relationships or a job or a friendship, we can say goodbye to friends that don't serve us. And when I say they don't serve us anymore, that means that it's not their job to do things for us. It's just that the relationship doesn't grow because maybe you've grown out of it and that other person doesn't understand who you are anymore or the conversations you're having are not ones that you want to have anymore. A person with a growth mindset isn't going to sit around and gossip. They're going to stick with people who have goals and think about the future. So think about that. Think about what you talk to your friends about or people who are close to you. Are you just gossiping? Are you talking about other people? Why? Why are you talking about how you can become a better person somewhere in your life? Because there is always room for improvement. Think about it. In every aspect of your life, there is improvement. And I know I sound really serious today because, and I'm thinking about my coach Kelly right now, who always tells me to smile when I do an Instagram story. And, um, I, you know, she and I are both Capricorns and uh, we're serious people. We're very goal oriented. <laughs> and so, I mean, I do smile a lot, but when I'm really serious about getting a point across, I have no other choice, you guys, but to be serious. So bear with me. And hopefully my seriousness is not too much. I am fun, but I am very serious when it comes to goals, discipline, and overcoming my fears because my fears stopped me for so long. And if you know part of my story already, I made a big life change at the age of 42. I got divorced because I felt that I wasn't growing in the relationship. That the person I was married to wasn't, quote unquote, allowing me to grow at the speed I needed to grow. It was more comfortable for him, and I can't speak for him. But as I look back and I reflect, he wanted me to be the Jody he married at 24. And at 42, just switch those numbers around. I wasn't her anymore. And I didn't want to go back to her. I liked her. There were lots of things that I liked about me, but I didn't want to go back to her. Have you ever thought of that? If you are thinking about changing something in your life right now, think about who you were. And you're probably thinking about who you want to become, which is a really, really good thing. You want to keep growing and you don't want your fear to get in the way of stopping you. So let's talk about discipline, which is a huge one for me. And it, the word scares a lot of people. And especially with working with women for over 35 years, I don't throw the word discipline out there, but it's part of what it takes to reach the goal. A lot of people think it's self-control. In some ways, there is some self-control because what you need to think about in that self-control is, is what I'm doing, is what I'm eating, is where I'm moving to, or the person you're dating, is this getting you to the relationship, to the life, to the physique, to the health level you want to get to? And in order to get there, you do have to have some self-control. You can say, this friend is toxic in my life. And if I keep him or her in my life, then I'm not going to be able to reach this goal because she's not cheering me on. He is not wanting this for me. 
And therefore it's making me hard. It's making it hard for me to work hard towards that goal. It's hard to do these things by yourself. And that's why a support system is so important. And I talk about that in my hot and healthy meal plan. And I talk about it whenever I can talk about it. And if you've been listening to the show, you know that I talk about a support system is really, really crucial in reaching your goals. If you don't have the right people supporting you at a time that you are leaving a part of your life, transitioning into a new phase of your life, and you don't have that support behind you, it is more difficult to do it all by yourself. And I did that. So I'm not giving myself a pat on the back, but yeah, if you've done that without a support system, go ahead right now or call that friend and give him or her a pat on the back because it's not easy to change things or people in your life without a strong support system. So when I got divorced, I did not have a strong support system. My friends were not supportive. My family was kind of supportive. When I decided to compete in fitness shows, nobody was supportive. So I had to sort of divorce myself from the few friends that I still had and say that this goal of competing in a fitness show is very important to me. And I could explain to you, my friends, why it's important to me. And if you're my friend and you believe in me and you want to support me, then I would appreciate your support. But they didn't. They thought it was dumb. They thought I was too old. And thank God I didn't listen to them. Thank God I did what I did because competing and winning those two world shows gave me the confidence to try more things, to be less afraid to take more risks on me. I knew I had the work ethic. I've always been a hard worker. And I could pretty much outwork anybody. And I could probably outlast most people. That's that's the goal for me is to outlast everybody. To last out, outlast everybody. But it gave me more confidence to end friendships that weren't working for me that were toxic and to put myself out there in the dating game and having more confidence as a single mom and making hard decisions um, where my daughters may not have been happy about it. But hey, listen, you know, it's not about my kids liking me when I'm raising them. It's about me protecting them and guiding them in the right way. So in order to do all of those things, whether you have a support system or not, and it's huge. And the support system could be, you know, again, friends, family, um, your place of worship. It could be your gym. That's where I got most of my support were from the other people that I was friendly with at the gym. They were my support system for the longest time because we had similar goals. So if you're looking for a support system, find people that have similar goals. And if the people you're hanging around with right now do not have similar goals, I encourage you to move on and try new friends. Find a new network of friends. Get yourself out there and meet new people. So discipline is important. And I've been talking about it for a while now, especially when setting goals or embarking on a journey to become the new you, whether it's hot and healthy or fearlessly authentic, to become the CEO of your company, to own your own company, to sell your company, to start a family. It takes discipline. And discipline provides the structure and focus needed to stay on track and make progress towards our aspirations. So I threw in getting pregnant in there, starting a family. And you might think, well, where does discipline come in from trying to start a family? Well, you've got to work on it, right? It takes discipline 
unless you get really lucky, it takes discipline to know when you're ovulating and you're, you're adhering to a schedule. That's the discipline. Discipline doesn't always have to be hard or not fun. But remember that discipline that you're putting in now, that hard work that you're putting in now, like the hard work I put in in raising my daughters and building a business at the age of 50 and a brand and continuing to evolve, I get to reap the benefits. I get to reap the benefits of having the most wonderful daughters in the world that drive me crazy at times, but I would drop and do anything for forever and ever and ever. That will never, ever change. Discipline also helps us overcome procrastination. Resist instant gratification and push through obstacles that may arise. In essence, discipline is the backbone of personal growth and achievement. Do you understand now how important discipline is in goal setting? For you procrastinators out there, and I know I'm one of them, I will look for other ways to distract myself and procrastinate if I don't want to do something. Right there, I realize, oh, Jody, you're not being disciplined. And I pull myself back and I'm like, okay, Jody, stop. Or I'm working on something. Like when I was writing the book, that was hard. So I would stop. I would scroll through social media. I'd go play with my dog. And I know I have a fascinating and exciting life. Uh, but I knew I was using those things as a distraction. What I needed to do was stay disciplined. So when you incorporate discipline and you stay disciplined, and I I love using a journal to stay disciplined. That's my way of doing it. When you stay disciplined in heading towards your goals, reaching your goals, you're going to get them faster unless you allow procrastination to get in the way and other obstacles or instant gratification. Oh, well, I'm writing this book right now or I'm writing my hot and healthy accelerator program, but oh, this is really hard. I don't wanna do this right now. Let me call one of my daughters. Let me call a friend. Let me go and see what I could eat. Anything. Something that's going to instantly give me gratification. Something that I want to do. Don't let yourself do it. Or if you are doing it, become hyper aware of the fact that you're doing it. I'll even do things like go and fold laundry. Yeah, I'm one of those people. I don't mind folding laundry. I don't mind washing clothes or folding laundry. I just don't like putting them away. Let's also get into, because I've talked about fear here also. Fear shapes our behavior and decisions. As I mentioned at the beginning of the show, that the reason I named this show Fearlessly Authentic is because I was a self-proclaimed scaredy cat. And with this show, the show has allowed me to become a self-proclaimed recovering scaredy cat. In doing this show, there was fear. Would I suck? Was anybody going to listen? But I knew that unless I put in the hard work and I was disciplined and consistent, because consistency comes from being disciplined. A lot of people will say consistency, consistency. Yeah, but that comes from being disciplined. You can't be consistent if you don't have a, a disciplined mindset. So one of the goals of doing this show was get over yourself, Jody. Get over your fears. You know how to talk intelligently. 
And hopefully people will find you interesting and will learn from you and feel empowered and inspired to live a fearlessly authentic life. You are the voice to them that you wish you had when you were afraid to make changes in your life at different times in your life. So the discipline has gotten me to, today is episode 223. How could I have gotten here without being disciplined? I couldn't. And one of the things that I love about doing this show live, yes, we are live in over, I think over a hundred countries are listening right now that this is a live show. I have to show up. I have to show up prepared, whether I'm in a good mood or bad mood. (laughs) And the show must go on. And I love that about live radio. I love it. I really do. I'm going to leave you with one other thought before we go to a break. And I want to get into it more after the break. Is exploring fear and its impact. Just a little bit, something to think about. Fear is a very powerful emotion that could either propel us forward or hold us back, depending on how we choose to respond to it. When we face something new or unfamiliar, fear often comes up as a natural response to the unknown, the fear of the unknown. However, Fear can manifest in different ways and understanding its various facets can empower us to navigate it more effectively. And that, my friends, in a nutshell, is how we are going to handle fear, face fear, deal with fear. It's all in the way that we react to it and how we manifest it. Whether that fear is real we're getting attacked by a wild animal or it's perceived fear for the future. So we're going to talk about that more when we get back. Stay tuned. We'll be back in a few minutes. Hi, everybody, and welcome back. We are talking about discipline, goals, and fears. I know this is a serious subject, but it's very near and dear to my heart because this is what I do with women all the time. And this is what I do for myself. And it's important to explore why we fear things that we desire and how to stop doing that. Because if we want to move forward, if we want to change things in our life, the only way that we're going to do that is to overcome the fear, embrace the fear or run away from the fear. So there are a few acronyms for fear. F-E-A-R is how you spell fear. False evidence appearing real. This is the idea that fear is often based on perceptions or interpretations that may not be grounded in reality. For example, you fear that something might happen to you if you take a bike ride all by yourself, but that's a perceived fear. You don't know that. Okay. I'll be really honest here. I am going away and I am flying and I, I, I don't fear flying But with all the plane crashes lately, I was getting a little nervous about being in a plane crash and dying. Uh, The only good thing I could see about that, if God forbid I died, was that, you know, my daughters would still have their dad. Um, Yeah, I think about things like that. But that's a perceived fear that isn't grounded in reality. It's thinking about something that's going to happen in the future, not what's happening now. 
face everything and reset. That's when we confront our fears head on and use them as opportunities to grow and become more resilient. For me, I used to fear perceived future things. If I get divorced, what are people going to think of me? If I get divorced, what's that going to be like? Oh, I'm going to be this kind of person. Some of those things did become reality. Um, my daughters went to a private school and uh, basically nobody was divorced there. And it wasn't like a, a religious school or anything like that, but basically everybody was married, whether happy or not. Uh, and I, I felt like I was wearing the A for the scarlet letter. Um, it was That was a tough time for me also. Uh, I didn't look like the other moms. I didn't dress like the other moms. Uh, this is suburba, suburbia, Connecticut. So I worried about those things. And so uh, for the longest time, I allowed that perceived fear of what people would think of me and not like me because I also used to be a people pleaser. And I allowed that fear to stop me from moving forward. So instead of having a growth or an abundance mindset, I was allowing myself to have a scarcity mindset. Now, the only place that didn't happen was in the gym. That's when I was fearlessly authentic. That's where I was growing. And what I didn't know at the time was that not only was my body growing leaner, stronger, fitter, healthier, my mind was too. So the gym was my place, my safe place. It was the place where I felt free to grow, free to be me, free to be fearlessly authentic. So what I did was I decided to face everything and reset. And that's when I decided to get divorced. And that's when I decided to remove myself from the toxic friends. And that's when I decided to ignore the judgmental people in my life and compete in fitness shows because that's what I wanted. And that's when I decided to reset my mindset when I did every single one of those things. And let me tell you, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy at all. And I also decided to remove myself and reset my network of friends who weren't supportive of me. A couple of years after my divorce, I realized the, re the relationships that I had with a lot of the women in my our birthday group that we called it uh, were talking about me behind my back. It was a toxic environment. And finally, I decided instead of forgetting everything and running, which is another acronym for fear, forget everything and run. Sure, I ran away from those people, but I didn't run away from fear. I faced it and reset it. And every time I reset it, I got stronger. Now, if you forget everything and run, that represents an instinctual response to fear, which is to flee or avoid any type of discomfort, fight or flight discomfort. And forget everything and run would be if you are attacked by somebody who wants to hurt you. You're just going to run. But 
something that you perceive is a fear, I encourage you not to run from it, but to rise, face it, and reset. One other acronym for fear is feelings expressed and released. And I love this one. This emphasizes the importance of acknowledging and expressing our emotions, including fear in healthy ways. I did that a lot. And that really helped me understand what I was doing, how I was handling my perceived fear. I wasn't being attacked by an animal or a person who wanted to bring harm to me. I was highlighting the idea. I was looking at fear as false evidence appearing real. It was false evidence appearing real. Took me a long time. Took me a long time. And, I, you know, we still face those things. But feelings expressed and released, another acronym for fear, there is nothing wrong with talking to yourself, writing it down, having a therapist, a counselor, a coach, where you can safely acknowledge those feelings, express them and release them and own them. If you follow me on social media, you'll know that I talk about owning it, owning who you are owning what you want to do, owning what you love, owning the essence of you. And part of, part of that is understanding your fears and how you're going to react to it because everything in life is how you react to it. Good things and bad things can come towards us. It's the way we react to them. So my reaction to things that scare me is that I rise to the situation, I face it, and I overcome it. Not always easy. I'm 63 years old. I've had a lot of practice doing this. And all of these things, discipline and overcoming fear, is so key in setting goals. And when I decided to put together my Hot and Healthy Accelerator program, which has been such a joy for me, and I was really scared to do this because I've never offered a program online before. And no, none of my followers are used to me offering anything. I offer, you know, I offer lots of things for free, but I've never said, you know, hey, join this program. It will change your life if you want to become hot and healthy. And really hot and healthy is just another way to say, I want to feel good in my skin. I want to feel good about how I approach things. And how I present myself into the world. So if we have our goal, our goal is hot and healthy. I want to become hot and healthy. I want to feel sexy. This is for any age, any age at all. But I find that women over a certain age, usually postmenopausal women, struggle the most with this because they get stuck in thinking that this is the way they're supposed to be, whatever that supposed to be means to them. I want to break those barriers for those ladies because we're not supposed to be anything that we're not. And we'll do a really, really shitty job of trying to be somebody we don't want to be anymore. 
or somebody we're not. And I want to share this example with you that I've shared on other shows. So I don't know if you've heard it before, but I'm going to share it with you now. And I really would like Carrie, who helps, who edits these shows, uh, to please use this because it's it was really a turning point for me. When I was 46, 47 years old, and I was beginning my competing life when nobody supported me. And I kept looking at the younger girls. I was her oldest client, so I was 46, and the other girls were 20 to maybe 27, 28, whatever. They were 20 years younger than me. And I would see girls that had similar body types. And I would try to imitate the way she walks. Now, look, guys, I know how to walk in heels, all right? Nobody needs to teach me how to walk in heels. But I'm walking on stage in stripper heels, in a bikini, with confidence. And I had never done it before. Never. So first and foremost, you know everybody's going to be fit because this is a fitness competition. So I would watch everybody and I would try, I would try a little bit from this one, a little bit from that one. And finally, my coach said to me, will you stop looking at everybody else and just walk like yourself? And she had a really heavy, thick uh, Boston accent. Stop looking at everybody else. Just walk like you. And I'm like, I, I don't know. I, I don't know how to walk like me. She's like, what do you mean you don't know how to walk like you? Walk. Just walk. Walk the way you think you should be walking. And then we'll tweak it. We'll work on it. And that's what I did. But the point I want to make here is that I didn't know what my walk looked like because I hadn't walked in those, those shoes before. No pun intended. They say you can't criticize people whose shoes you haven't walked in. Lots of people judge me who have never walked in my shoes, but that's for another episode. And she forced me to dig deep into my essence, into my femininity, into my strength, into my resilience, into who is Jody. I didn't really know. I knew I was a mom. I knew I liked to work out and I knew that I was a great coach to other women. But who was I going to be on that stage? The cool thing about it is that I got to create her. I got to create the woman I presented on stage. Now, who was she? She was just... Let me tell you something, guys. She was the most confident woman I've ever met. Well, she was. That Jody that walked on stage. She was the woman I always wanted to be. And I was creating her as I was working hard. I was staying disciplined and I wasn't allowing fear to get in the way of me becoming that woman. It wasn't about looking sexy because if you've ever been to a fitness competition, it's not about being sexy and anybody who thinks it is doesn't know anything about fitness competitions. It's about poise. It's about stage presence. It's about confidence. It's about being fit and healthy. And that, that's who I was embodying. I was becoming her and a great coach or therapist or trainer or friend or community 
will help you get there. Because without somebody believing in the you that you want to become, it's really hard to do it by yourself. So I had a great coach who said, just be you. And feeling like, I, you know, I said to her, I don't, I don't know who I am. I don't know who I am on that stage. I've never walked on that stage. I don't know. Just try it. Just do it. Just be you. And that's what I all want you to take away from today is I wouldn't be doing this show for four years now if I let fear get in the way and I wasn't disciplined. I wouldn't be here right now. I wouldn't get to meet all of these wonder pe wonderful people who've come into my life. I don't have toxic people in my life anymore. I have people who cheer me on and support me and understand what hard work takes to build something. So mindset, mindset, it's what I do. I teach without my clients knowing that I'm teaching them. It is the first step in setting a goal and understanding discipline and understanding that you do have fears maybe about failure. You do have fears about judgment. You do have fears that maybe your circle of community might change because you're going to change but aren't you going to change for the better? Aren't you working towards a better, most excellent version of you? Yeah, you are. It wouldn't be important to you. None of us set out a goal to be the worst versions of ourselves. It's fear that stops so many of us. And I wasn't going to let fear get in my way. I was... I was 46 years old. I was a single mom now. I had to figure shit out by myself really fast. I was getting old. I thought it was old back then. And of course, if the goal is to get hot and healthy, and I use that because that's a term that I love, but it's really about becoming more confident and embracing the beautiful you that you are. Then we need to make sure that we're fueling our bodies with the right foods. We're strength training to maintain and build our muscles so we don't fall and injure ourselves and become dependent on other people. Understanding hormones is huge. I have many episodes about hormones. You could DM me if you wanna know more. I'm not gonna get into it right now because we are almost at the end of the show. But understanding, I will encourage you all, if you are, if you have not started perimenopause, if you have not had um, different, any, any, any symptoms of being uh, perimenopausal, uh, I would really urge you to go find a hormonal expert who could check your blood levels for all your hormones to see, so you know what your optimal hormonal levels are. And those hormone imbalances could also cause a lot of issues with sleep. But in becoming hot and healthy and our goal to be the healthiest, confident version of ourselves, we need to balance our hormones, to prioritize sleep, which was a huge issue for me in my 50s until I started taking hormones. And now my sleep is much better. And Embracing discipline to stay focused on our goals and overcome obstacles while confronting and managing fear to unleash your full potential and pursue your dreams. Did you hear that? It's important to embrace discipline in order to stay focused on your goals so you can unleash your full potential and pursue your dreams. 
I love you all so much. Thank you for listening to Fearlessly Authentic. Remember to rate, review, and subscribe. Please share this episode with somebody that you know needs it. Until next week, go live your most fearlessly authentic life, everybody. Bye-bye and wish me a happy fourth anniversary for Fearlessly Authentic on Voice America. Bye-bye, everybody. See you next week.